welcome welcome everybody welcome 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 today i wanted to do my voiceover warm-up live and i thought it would be fun uh, welcome everybody who's watching on youtube on facebook um on instagram very very great to have you listening to me while i actually perform a practice live as well um, if you don't know who i am my name is leanne turner i'm a voiceover and speaking coach I've uh, been doing it full time now for about four years and uh, I just want you to just hear some of my favorite reads I want to read today. The book that I got today, right, is this one, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. If you did like GCSE English, it was probably one of them on your core texts. So it's one of my favorite books um, and I shall read page 27. So it goes, it was then that Calpurnia requested my presence in the kitchen. She was furious, and when she was furious, Calpurnia's grammar became erratic. When in tranquility, her grammar was as good as anybody's in Maycomb. Attica said Calpurnia had more education than most coloured folks. When she squinted down at me, the tiny lines around her eyes deepened. There's some folks who don't eat like us, she whispered fiercely. But you ain't called on to contradict them at the table when they don't. That boy's your company, and if he wants to eat at the tablecloth, you let him, you hear? He ain't company cow, he's just a cunning am. Hush your mouth, don't worry who they are. Anybody sets foot in this house, it's your company. And don't you let me catch you remarking on their ways like you are so high and mighty. Your folks might be better in the cunning house, but it don't count for nothing where you're disgracing them. If you can't act fit to eat at the table, you can just sit here and eat in the kitchen. Calpurnia sent me, sent me through the swinging door to the dining room with a stinging smack. I retrieved my plate and finished dinner in the kitchen. Thankful, though, that I was spared the humiliation of facing them again, I told Capona to just wait. I'd fix her. One of these days when she wasn't looking, I'd go off and drown myself in Barker, Barker's eddy, and then she'd be sorry. So this is one of my uh, favorite things I love to do. Whenever I'm doing that warm-up, I always just pick a book or a blog or a text or something just to read out loud. This is one of my favorite books from school from, like, I don't know, 13, 14. What did you read at school? Did you like reading at school as well? So that's one of them that I used to always like I use it as to practice because it's got quite a lot of text and people's kind of um uh thoughts as well. Then I wanted to read you a second book, which is called I Want to Be a Voiceover, but where do I start? Written by da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Yours truly. Yeah, I wrote this book. Um, I think when I first went full-time maybe about 2016 2017 and it was basically all the different questions and stuff that I had asked myself I thought let me just put it all in a book so I have it all in one place so if I ever have these questions again I'll be able to know where the answers are keep it updated and stuff and then I thought well other people ask me these questions so I might as well just put it somewhere other people can read it too so I thought I'd read you today chapter two of my book which says I want to be a voiceover but where do I start and you can get yourself a free sample by joining my mailing list. So click the link in the bio if you're on Instagram. Otherwise, I'm going to give you the link at the end. All right. So it says chapter two. Right. Uh, and it's titled get a coach, get training, get advice. So I say here, um, at some point of a voiceover's career, they, they have or have had or currently have in coaching training sessions so please I ask beg and implore you to get yourself a coach whether you've been in the industry one month one year 10 years 25 years or even 50 years everybody needs an expert ear to hear what it is that they do well and what it is they need to improve and grow in and the benefits of having a coach is that they're not emotionally tied to your voice and they can give you useful honest feedback on how you can project yourself more how you can articulate yourself much better as well um, so that was one that was part of the sample chapter that I've got in a uh, in chapter two and I, I kind of go on and say as well it says in Proverbs 16:22 uh, that plans fail for lack of counsel but with many advisors they succeed so if you have more advisors this is just in anything in general but I wrote this down in my book and I thought it was really helpful you can have uh, many advisors and you're going to get a better idea of what's going on or what's going wrong as well and what you're doing so I say also, you don't need to just have one coach. You can have one coach one year, then another the next year to train in a different skill. So I advise you to get minimum one coach, one trainer, one mentor, one advisor, someone to help you through. Um, and uh, so it, 
I would say it's good if someone's in your country. If not, you can use Skype. You can use Zoom. Do you know what I mean? Um, someone who can listen to you and listen to you read and give you training on what you do good right now and how they can see your potential. Someone who's got a bit of vision for you as well. That's also right. And I also said, also be aware that different coaches offer different skills. Some of them are experts in cinema trailers, others in audio books. Others are experts at medical reads, e-learning. So you've really got to get a coach who you think will help you in your chosen field. So you've got to know what voice you've got. Are you good at animation, character? Are you, have you got that big cinema trailing voice? Do you have an explainer voice? Do you have an e-learning one? What, or, do you have an um, advert one? What is your voice useful for? So you've got to know that or get some feedback on where people think your voice most suits. Um, Because the worst feedback you can have is, you've got a really nice voice. That don't help you with nothing, love. You need to know what your nice voice can do and where you can get yourself booked as well. That's what I would say. That's what's key. Um, And I always get questions. I always get asked questions. I thought I'd use this time as well as do my warm up to also um, just go through a couple of the questions. So I could do it for more than one person rather than always answering back the same person each time. I thought it would be useful to... um, kind of um explain it to more than one person so the first question i got is this rightly i work full time uh, they've got kids and so they say how how can they forward their voiceover career um with a limited amount of time and i think you can do a lot with very little you don't have to be doing it full time etc if that's not your goal um for me because i remember when i was doing a nine to five what i would do is i would write like a list of to do's and just Every lunchtime, it could be like, oh, I'm going to send one email to one agency or one explainer video company, or I'm going to reach out to someone who can mentor me, or I'm going to listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video about voiceover or how to speak more effectively. I just do one little thing that could take me 10 minutes, 15 minutes or something like that. I have a phone call with someone about training or something like that. Just one little thing that I could use to kind of pace myself on so it could be send an email uh watch something on youtube um and it could even be as small as recording a script or something or an advert that you've seen on your phone on a whatsapp and then just send it to your friend and ask them what do they think i mean they'll probably say yeah great but or someone else who's got more of a critical ear um so i hope that answers that one so do small stuff with the time you've got because they can when you add them all up at the end of the week they can have quite a big impact so that was the first question. I hope I've answered that one. Second question was, um, how will I know which e-learning companies to market your voiceover skills to? And the question is, you don't really know who's going to want your particular sound of voice for the course and the client that they've got. Do you know what I'm saying? So with that, I say shoot at your demo, shoot at your sound bites, whatever, to all of them because you don't know. They may not want you right then and there when you send that email, but they may want you six months down the line. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, don't worry, it's just Ribena. It's not no rum. Um, so that's why I think you've got to really just contact all and everybody because there may be someone, because it's happened to me, Someone's been in a company, they've moved on to start another company or worked for another company, remembered my sound and contacted me and said, I've worked with them on such and such project. Now they're working for another client. So you don't know when or when your skills are going to be needed or when your particular sound is going to be needed. So I say contact, um, apply to all of the ones. If you want to have like a little goal, a little plan, say like, for example, if you're in let me just give you my, if you're in London, contact those that are in London. Then you go out a bit, contact those, contact Elan companies in Reading. Then go more north, Manchester, Birmingham, those, you know, that's what I'm saying. So have a, like a spectrum where you start small and then go out, out, out. So that would be a way of organizing stuff. Then go national and like that. Um, you can try international, but you have to check, does your voice or accent suit what that company usually creates videos and course e-learning courses for um yeah so when you're if you're on a google search put in probably something like e-learning plus london or e-learning plus yorkshire or wherever it is that you are and start from your town or then branch out don't just be going like all over the place have a organized list of those that you um contact and keep it on like an excel sheet so you can keep a contact of the name 
uh, the email address and the date that you contacted that company too. That's really, really helpful. Um, that was question two. And then number three is, is there any voiceover work I can get without having a demo? My dear, you can get plenty, plenty, plenty big work. Listen, don't think, because I kind of had that before, I was a bit hesitant before I had all my demos and lots more sounds and evidence and practice and videos and stuff of how I sound and what skill set I've got. Don't let that stop you. Get yourself out and about, like if it means like you put yourself up on Ancon, just get your sound out of different things that you can read or uh, just get a one page on like WordPress or Wix or whatever those other different websites and just have like, this is you reading poetry, you doing an advert, you doing an animation voice, just have a one page thing. It doesn't have to be anything huge. People just want to hear how you sound. They know that you're not a website designer. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, you can get work, but you've got to kind of work it in a different way. So you've got to be willing to probably do a bit of free work at first. So go to like charity events and often they may have a presenter or they've got someone doing name call or something like that. Or there's a video roll happening. You can say, listen, this is my sound. You can hear it on my SoundCloud or on my um, podcast page or wherever on my website. Um, I'd like to kind of do this section or the name calling or the numbers calling. If they've got a raffle, after a raffle, it's good to kind of go and get yourself in there. Can I come and um, can I come and do that part for you? You can say, I'm, you can say you're going to do, you can do it for a fifth. They say, no, no way, we're a charity. Then just say, you know, I'll do it for whatever. Um, so you can get work. You've got to hustle though. You've got to know how to go and look for it. The work is not going to come and just fall into your lap. You know, you've got to get out there emailing, calling, even just like now that things are opening up, you can start going out and about, start walking up and down and stuff like that, you know, to look for, um, look for different events that happen because some events are happening right now. Um, and, and as well, there's other ways. Think creatively, think outside the box and stuff. So look on YouTube. YouTube is huge for voiceover work because there's lots of videos that don't have sound or sadly the person whose voice it is is not that effective because I've watched a couple of videos and the voice is just throwing you. It's like I can't, I can watch the video. But I don't understand what's being said because the accent's just either too, too quick, too thick. It's just not matching what's been shown. So you can say, listen, I can give you this or I can provide this and give a sample of what you can do. Uh, and you can be a presenter for like a fashion show or a talent show. Lots of stuff happening. Even, okay, things are opening up very slowly, but you can go on Eventbrite, go on Meetup, look for events that happen. There's always some type of speaking event where you can go and get yourself out there. So you can get yourself exposure, which will hopefully lead on to work. But you've got to be willing to either work for very low money at first. Well, no, actually, that's not, not very low money, but you've got to really work be a bit more creative to try and put yourself out there you know but don't think that like okay if i don't have a, a demo that's going to block me it's not going to block you you're going to block you do you know what i mean as long as you've got evidence of how you sound like put them up on a on a website and people can go to that that that'll work do you know what i mean um yeah as well and, like, and there's some other ideas as well actually call up companies uh give them a soundbite from your website make it really basic just has your name a picture and five different audio tracks and then just how they can contact you and your email and stuff like that. Uh, so call up companies and give them, um, call up companies, email them um, for ones who you know have a kind of voiceover need. So ones who use, uh, uh, you know, telephone, telephone prompting that like press one, press two, press three, you know, um, and those as well who, um, you know, they may have a website. Some websites are doing virtual tours where, there's a couple of estate agents in that where you can be on and then there's someone walking you through a property and stuff and there's a voiceover explaining, this is the kitchen, this is that. So there's all these type of things that you can go and go and do. So don't let not having a demo stop you from going to get the work. You can go and get the work because you could have a demo, you still don't get no work. Do you see what I'm saying? It's the, it's the, it's the fight behind it really. Um, and another thing as well, podcasts are unreal. You can get yourself so much exposure. Go on Google and look at like top top podcasts are going or go on the different platforms, Spotify, iTunes, see who's in your area that you like to talk about, you know, something that you like to talk about. Go on and get yourself as a guest 
interviewer, interviewee uh, on a couple of podcasts. Go and do that because there's so much of that going and that'll expose how do you sound, what can you talk about, etc. So I think that's a really good little area coming out. And even like for some podcast hosts, you may want to do their introduction because a lot of people have a podcast, maybe it could be about, I don't know, beanbags, but they have someone else doing the introduction. Do you see what I'm saying? So even go and hustle and go through like your, I don't know, some some um, podcast that you like that you're interested in if they don't have a introduction or the introduction is a bit flat give them a sample don't just say i can do it for you who cares what you can do people want to you got to show me show me what you can do okay so always give like a little audio sample um and another question i got is what are your best tips for creating a voiceover website like okay I, i'm not a website designer okay so oh like i got mine done for me I know what should be on there, what people are looking for. So they want to, what do you look like? What's your name? Where are you based? Um, email, your telephone number and your voice samples. Give at least like if, say like, for example, for me, um, you will see my commercial demo, my e-learning and narration demo, bit of poetry work that I've done, uh, phone prompt work that I've done. So give a sample of what you can do. Don't make it huge. Just do like three or five but it needs to sound different not just you reading poetry a book no sound different phrase show your speaking a repertoire you know but and it can be just one page don't think like oh i've got to put all these different pages you have one page just your little face and all that information and then little free audio things underneath and and just and as and as well a little kind of paragraph says you know i usually book for uh, adverts or for I don't know um, e-learning whatever it is that you do so that is those are the questions that I got asked I often get questions asked and I thought let me just answer on the live after I've done my warm-up and um, so I hope that those have answered the questions for you my loves and if you want to get a copy of the book you can on Instagram you can grab it on um, linktree.com you can grab it there and uh, for those of you who are on the zoom thank you so much for watching i'm very very grateful i'm just going to share my screen with those on the zoom you can get it on my linktree page so linktree forward slash leanne's voice of course and um, those of you who want a copy of the um of my book uh, a free sample, you're not going to get a whole thing here, uh, a free sample, um, if you join the mailing list on the link tree, so link tree forward slash Leanne's voice, um, join the mailing list and I can give you, it's a welcome, like, hey, thanks for joining my speaking tips and uh, voiceover mailing list, um, I will give you a free sample of my book, which I'm giving out as well, so uh, it's been great, obviously, talking to you, keep in touch, I always hang out on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter on a whole bunch of places as well so that's where I hang out and if you if you haven't been able to get the link okay don't worry if you're on Instagram check in my bio if you're on the zoom and Facebook the pictures up um, and grab yourself there and I'd love to hear what you think and ah oh, one more question as well I wanted to kind of say as well next week I'm going to be going live and obviously I pick a book to read which one do you want? I'm going to put a poll up on my Instagram page. Which book do you want me to read? Okay. Uh, do you want me to read? It's a big one. Two packs poetry books. Okay. I'm going to read like a sample poem from it. Or do you want me to read the Obamas? It's got like quotes and stuff. It's really quite nice and encouraging. So let me know which one you want me to read. I'm going to put the poll up. Which one you want me to read in my voiceover warm up for next week? Um, and I will do that unless some other amazing book gets nominated. So I'm going to put it up in my polls on Instagram. Let me know which one you want me to read and I will do that for you. So thanks so much for hanging out and I hope you like my voiceover warm up and let me know if you've got any questions um, about, you know, things that I'm doing, etc. I always try and post a lot so you can see a lot of what I'm doing. Not really that shy. Uh, so yeah, it's been great hanging out with you and have a good evening, a good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, just have a great one. All right. And I'll see you next week.